Oh, she all. You know, I was just thinking today, I'd been hearing some things on the news and reading different things, and uh, it just got to be where it seems like every time you turn around, it's like you get more of uh, churches going against Jews, going against Israel. Now you got the Methodist. Again, I don't know if it's just a, a certain sect of the Methodists or, you know, uh, uh, you know, I mean, for instance, I'll give you an example, like in the Pentecostal groups, you got different ones uh, as far as Pentecost goes. Uh, you have, uh, you have the excuse of background, my brother Chet's calling Gimli, uh, that's the dog. Uh, anyway, um. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see, you know, you got like in the Pentecost, for instance, you got United Pentecost uh, and your uh, independent Pentecostals are different ones. Some are in organi or organizations and things, you know. So, again, with the Methodists, I don't know which sect. Oh, I do, I'm just generalizing it here, so you have to excuse me. It's it's not no poke at it. Uh, all Methodists, but uh, there's some Methodists um, that's wanting to oust uh, Zionist, uh, Christian Zionists, or you know, Zionist Jews, or, or whatever. But uh, you know, you, you got that, okay, and then you, you have a, a breakdown in the churches. Uh, also, where they're allowing more uh, uh, winking at, should I say, at the uh, things that God Himself called evil. You know, uh, if God called it evil, it's evil. You know, I mean, anything from murder to rape, adultery, uh, you know, prostitution, uh, homosexuality. Uh, murder, all these different things. If, if it's evil, if God calls it evil, it, it's it's just evil, no doubt about it. And there's too many that winks at, at at all that because of the fads of society and their philosophies. They go with what the general majority accept and say is exceptional and says that it's okay. Now, if you will read through Numbers and Exodus and Deuteronomy and different ones, you know, if you, as you read uh, the history of Israel, you know, they had a problem with idolatry. You think, well, how anyone could fall so, stoop so low to that to have a problem with it? Like the way a person can have an addiction with uh, alcohol or drugs or whatever. I mean, how could they have that? Think of it like this. What it was of its time was a fad. The fads of its time. That was the thing. To fit along with the Joneses, if you please. So, I mean, you have all this going along in the churches today. And it's not getting any better. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And, you know, there's no telling what tomorrow or the next day you're going to find in the news. Uh about the church so but the Lord told the uh, disciples he sit there when they was uh, talking about the Pharisees and stuff you know he said leave them alone he said the blind leads the blind and they'll both fall into the ditch and uh, that's why there will be a separation day one day. Separating of the sheep and the goats. So the good, a good question to ask ourselves and to ask someone else it would be, are you a sheep or a goat? You know, now, a lot of people can call themselves Christians. And, and things, but just because you call yourself one does not make you one. So you have to stop and consider everything overall, you know, where you stand, who you are. And, because see, the Lord did, you know, mention about 
us counting the cost. So before you call yourself a Christian, you know, you need to think about the cost. See, a lot of people don't say, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. It, it doesn't, but it does. And how it, it will cost you is to become a Christian, a true Christian. What are you going to give up? If you can't give up possessions, land, family, uh, you name it. Well, it, it. I mean, the list can go on. If you're not willing to leave them for the name of Christ and for His sake, then you cannot be His disciple. You cannot be a Christian. You can sugarcoat it. You can say if, ands, and buts, buts, and you can be who you are and who you want to be and follow the philosophies and the fads of the world and the general majority, but there's only going to be a few that make it. Uh, the broad is the way that leads to death and destruction. But narrow is the way, and straight is the gate that leads to life. And what did Jesus say? He said, and there be few that will find it. Are you of the few? And if someone sit there and talk about narrow-mindedness, uh, if following that narrow road means being narrow-minded, then I want to be narrow-minded, don't you? At least I hope so. So, these are just some thoughts uh, that I wanted to bring out and uh, talk about. So, this is something for us all. Okay, this is me, you, every one of us. And uh, let's make a stand. Where are you standing? Can you answer that question? Are you standing firm or are you loosey-goosey? Think about it. God bless you. And I hope that you make the right decisions and choices that you've counted the cost. So, shalom, my friends. And may God, may His countenance shine upon you. And may He give you strength to stand in these last days. Ha-ho.